What's going on, TGIFF? Thank goodness it's a football Friday right here on the Sports and Swag Report. I am Kerry Wood, better known as Mr. Sports and Swag, and we're here to break down week two in the SEC. SEC football uh, had a very nice weekend. Last week, Labor Day weekend, except for... Two games, twelve and two. The SEC went uh, against non-conference opponents. Everyone played non-conference opponents last week, and uh, everything went pretty good until um, Texas A&M and M de- and decided they would give up a thirty-four point lead at UCLA. Josh Rosen, they made him look like the next coming of Troy Aikman. <laughs> And so it, so it is, man. You know, Kevin Sumlin, who came into the season on the hot seat, that seat got a little bit harder. Although I have to, I would be remiss of not, you know, talking about what happened to him this week with the uh, A&M fans, or at least so-called fans, with the racial. Uh, you know, the racial uh, letters that they sent toward him with the racial slurs and, you know, saying he shouldn't be, you know, he has no business coaching the team and all of this and calling them the N-word. And uh, his wife basically put that out on social media and sold all, showed all the letters. And, uh, man, it's just a terrible situation going on there. Terrible situation. I hate it for Kevin Summon and his family. No one deserves that. I mean, it's just football. I mean, look, it is the Southeastern Eastern Conference, and we live for this thing, but at the end of the day, man, it's football. It's just football. But anyway, there are some people that don't look at it that way. And uh, again, Kevin Summon is definitely on the hot seat, man. That was a terrible performance there in the second half of that football game. A&M not being able to put the Bruins away. Uh, and the other loss that the SEC suffered was pretty much expected with Florida losing to um, Michigan. With The game was missing 10 players, man. They just, uh, I don't know, man. They, 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 they still don't have the offense. That offense is broken. And it just makes you wonder if those 10 players, including um, – uh, Callaway, the wide receiver, even if he was there, it kind of makes you wonder, you know, would Florida you know, have put, in, you know, many more points on the board? Not really sure about that. You know, thank goodness for those two pick sixes. It would have really been ugly there in Dallas last week. But, again, you know, those are the only two losses of the week. So I thought it was pretty good and included in those 12 victories the SEC went 3-0 and against the mighty ACC. <laughs> the ACC, those coaches, man, Devo and uh, uh, F- uh, Jimbo Fisher and all those other guys, man, oh, they they put it out there. Their league was the best, and they were the best last year, but it doesn't necessarily mean that they're the premier league in the country, and that, the SEC kind of showed them. A little bit of that last week, Alabama beating Florida State, South Carolina. We're going to talk about the Gamecocks here later on as they play a conference game tomorrow against Missouri. They took care of NC State. And, uh, of course, Tennessee on Monday night, Labor Day night, took care of Georgia Tech, although that wasn't <laughs> it wasn't the most resounding victory. But, hey, W is a W right now at this point for Bush Jones, and that's all that matters. So, Without further ado, man, we weren't able to join you here week one, and uh, I hate that, and I apologize for that, but we are back here for week two, and we're going to get this thing started, man, right here on the Sports and Swag Report. This is going to be a weekly thing here on Friday nights, Friday afternoon, and uh, we're going to talk about the games upcoming, and then we're going to talk about, you know, come back with the recap show on Sunday. And uh, talk about what we saw on Saturday. So we, we, I'm looking forward to doing this every week. This is the best conference in, in college football. I still believe that. 
And, uh, man, I, I can't wait. This week, too, we talked about week one with Alabama playing Florida State last week in, at, in Atlanta. We talked about uh, the NC State game against South Carolina. Those were, those were really good football games. But this week, this week is really important, man. It is really important because – We've got two of our SEC teams, Auburn and Georgia. Auburn going to play Clemson up at Death Valley, the defending national champs, who looked fantastic last week and man, throttling <laughs> Kent State. And then Notre Dame, who looked pretty, pretty impressive in their own right, taking care of the Temple Isles. So we, we've got both of those games. We've got a slew of other games, man, that, that really – you know, maybe a bit under the radar that we're going to talk about here in the next few minutes, get you kind of ready for tomorrow. Um, you know, I, I just think it's a really important weekend because I think if you look at this thing with Auburn especially, Auburn has a chance to, you know, put themselves in position to possibly get to the playoff. Um, if they win, If they can win this football game tomorrow, even if they lose, they're not out of it. But think what this could do if Jared Stidham goes into Clemson <laughs> and beats the defending national champs. I mean, you think if you thought the hype surrounding Jared Stidham was unbelievable here before the season started, you just wait if Auburn pulls that thing off tomorrow. And then, of course, we've got Georgia traveling up to Notre Dame where I'm hearing as many as 20,000 Bulldog fans are going to South Bend without a ticket. <laughs> Without a ticket, you know that's crazy. But you know what? I don't blame them. I don't blame them. Notre Dame is a once in a lifetime trip. It seems like it's definitely on my bucket list. I would love to go to a game there. You know me. You know I'm a big Bama fan. I'd love to see Bama go up there and play a game um, again, like they used to back in the in the in the man the '80s and all of that. You know, we'll, we'll see what happens with that. But, man, Georgia, that is – I don't blame those guys, those fans for going up there and following their team up there to Notre Dame. That is a special trip. It's got to be – and uh, actually quite envious of them, to be honest with you. So, man, without further ado, let's get into those two games. I'm going to start off with those two games because they are the marquee games. But we've got some other games that I think are going to be very interesting that people are kind of, you know, probably going to overlook. But anyway, we'll start with the marquee matchups. Let's start off with that Auburn game up there at Clemson. Clemson, we all know what the deal is with them, with them losing uh, basically all of their skill players. All of the the players that really made big-time plays for them last season, when you think about Deshaun Watson, of course, the quarterback. Now he's with the Houston Texans. You think about Wayne Gallman, who's in the NFL. Now you think about Mike Williams, who's in the, in the NFL with the San Diego Chargers. You think about Jordan Leggett, the tight end, who's in the NFL right now. Man, they had four fantastic players that they could get the ball to at any time. And and I mean, you better have your you better be, be on them, or they will take it to the house on you in a, in a, in a flash. Well, I mean, they're replacing all those guys. And uh, Auburn's got to deal with that tomorrow. Uh, the one thing that, you know, this is a big-time road test for Auburn. There's no question about that. But the one thing Auburn has going for them is their defense. And I think they showed that last week, really shut down Georgia Southern. And I understand Georgia Southern isn't, you know, a juggernaut. I mean, I know they're a Sun Belt team and all of that stuff, but, you know, they run that triple option, and they have been a team, much like Georgia Tech, that runs that thing to perfection, and Auburn was ready for it. Now, they're not going to see, they're not going to see triple option uh, tomorrow, but they are going to see a team that's led by uh, Kelly Bryant, who's making only a second start. Um, you know, we're going to see a team that's maybe not as, you know, prolific offensively as they have been in the past. I know they threw up uh, 44 points last week against Kent State, and that was very impressive, but that was Kent State. This is Auburn, man. This Auburn team, I think, could uh, could ultimately have the best defense in the SEC. If not the best, they could be right there with the best in Alabama and LSU. I think those three defenses are going to kind of duke it out all season to – 
the for supremacy as far as the SEC, the SEC's best defense. Alvin's Alvin's going to be right there. It's going to be the big test tomorrow um, to see what they can do. But I I I got a feeling they're going to be fine. I think they're going to be just fine because I really I really kind of think this game is going to be kind of you know played close to the best. I don't think Dabo Swinney, especially early in this football game, I don't think he wants his young quarterback to make a mistake, even though they are the home team. And I think Auburn, Auburn with uh, Gus Malzahn kind of bringing Jarrett Stidham along a little slowly. Uh, Stidham last week kind of looking, you know, showing the rust of being off for a couple years or whatever. He looked like a player that hadn't really played a meaningful game in a long time. Um Bringing that guy along, bringing the offense along slowly might be the best thing for them early in this game, especially with Cameron Pet, Pet way back in the lineup who uh, sat out last week against Georgia Southern due to a suspension. Cameron, uh, Cameron Petway has got to be the enforcer like he was last year. He has got to be a guy that moves the chains for all of them, gets them in, you know, if they can get in the third, second and third and shorts, third and four or less or whatever, he's got to be able to move the chains. If they can do that, keep that Clemson offense over on the sideline, I think Auburn has a, you know, has a chance to come out with the victory because, again, Clemson is still, they looked fantastic last week, but, again, these are, all of these guys are pretty much newbies on their football team. Now, I do believe this now. Dabo Swinney has, has recruited fantastic. At Clemson, he has done the job there, and and those guys are reloading. They're not, you know, this is not a a one year wonder anymore. We we see that because Dabble Swinney has won, I think it's what sitting at maybe about five straight years right now where Clemson has won double digit games, and uh, they're not they're not going anywhere. They're not going anywhere. Uh, I was a fingernail from picking Clemson to win the ACC. The only, re- the only reason I did not pick them is because of quarterback. Uh, having a, an experienced guy for Florida State like DeAndre Francois kind of was the only reason that I picked Florida State to win the ACC. Well, now, of course, unfortunately, that is, you know, that's kind of going by the wayside with um, Francois getting hurt last week against Alabama, being out for the season. You know, I think Clemson is the, I think Clemson is the front runner. I mean, I think, you know, Miami could be a team that could, you know, maybe have something to say about that in the ACC title game if they make it that far. But uh, I mean, I mean, we were thinking maybe NC State could be a dark horse in that league. Of course, Louisville's still there with Lamar Jackson and company. But man, I'm, I, I don't see anything that's changed. I don't see anything that's changed. I think Clemson is the best team in that league right now. And um, (laughs) I I would be surprised right now if they're not the team that represents the ACC in the college football playoff if if they are lucky enough to have one. So what does Auburn have to do to win this game? Like I said, I think they've got to keep the chains moving. They've got to keep – and that that starts out on first and second down, getting you know getting three or four yards, four or five yards on first down. That's going to be mixing the pass and the throw. I, th- I think that you know you want to you want to run the football, but again, you're going to have to kind of loosen that Clemson D up with some passes, a little play action or whatever, maybe some screens or whatever. You know, get still them kind of in the flow, and then of course sooner or later you're probably going to have to beat. Clemson with a deep ball or two to see if you can loosen that defense up and score a few points. Um, I think that's the biggest key because I think the Auburn's defense is going to be fine. I think uh, Dabo Swinney is going to have Clemson kind of come out, uh, you know, kind of kind of vanilla, start the game first quarter, maybe first quarter and a half of the game, and um, we'll see what happens from there. So I, right now the spread is at five, with Clemson, of course, being favored at home. I don't know. I'm you know, again. I'm gonna give my my pick for this game here later in the uh, show. But right now, you know, I, I I think we're looking at a close football game tomorrow night at Clemson. I think it's gonna be a barn burner. Last year, if you remember, 
Gus Malzahn played musical chairs with his quarterbacks. And I think cost this team the football game. Auburn lost that game 19-13. But if you remember, that was the first game of the season. And he was shuffling uh, uh, his quarterbacks in and out, Jeremy Johnson and and, uh, Sean White, in and out. And there may have been a uh, GF3, John Franklin III, sighting as well in that football game, cycling three quarterbacks in and out of a game that was tight, where Sean White clearly was the better option. I think if he had stuck with Stan White, I mean, <laughs> Stan White, Sean White, I, I think Auburn wins that football game. I, Auburn controlled it. They And I think that's much what they have to do tomorrow night is kind of play it close to the best. Um, you know, play the clock, take take time off the clock, get first down. That formula pretty much worked for them, and they did everything but win that football game last year. Think of what kind of ramifications that would have had if Auburn had finished that game off. So, again, right now we're we're seeing Auburn have a chance, probably possibly, to do that again tomorrow night. And uh, we'll see if they they can finish the job this time. I think they can, but again, I'm not gonna <laughs> give my pick away just yet. I'm gonna leave it for the end of the show where we'll pick uh, the rest of the games as well. Moving on to marquee game number two: the Georgia Bulldogs visiting the Notre Dame Fighting Irish, who. Broke into the poll at um, number 25 uh, this past week. Uh, Georgia sitting at number 16. You know, <laughs> I, I, I'm i not feeling Notre Dame. I'm just going to be real with you. I, I think that Brian Kelly is a really good coach. I still do believe that. But I'm not feeling Notre Dame uh, being ranked right now. We're talking about a four and eighteen from last season. Uh, I do like their quarterback now, Brandon Winbush, who um, is a sophomore. He's finally getting his chance to uh, lead this offense. He's a guy that can. He's a dual threat guy. Can run in and throw it. Uh, he's gonna, you know, gonna make them. I think more dangerous offensively than they were last year. But still, I think this there's some holes still in this football team. Yeah, uh, I think I just I really do, I really do. Uh, Notre Dame played a lot of close games. I will say that last season. Uh, if you're looking for an angle in this in this uh, football game where Georgia is a five point underdog, just like Auburn is five point underdog going up um, to South Bend, if you're looking for an angle in this game. Uh, Georgia, I'm sorry, Notre Dame was one and four last year against. Power five opponents at home uh, in those five games that, that they played against power five teams, um, which is not good, of course. But now, in those five games, they all were decided by one touchdown or less. So that leads me to believe it's going to be a tight game. And yeah, uh, and I, I understand that Jake Fromm, who we're going to you know, talk about here just a second. Jake Fromm was a true freshman going to this football game, his first time on the road. It's going to be interesting to see how he handles it, to be honest with you. It is going to be very interesting. He handled it well coming into the game and uh, spelling uh, Jacob Eason last week who got hurt. He did fantastic. Jacob Eason, man, <laughs> I, you know, really tough luck for him to get hurt so early in that football game. But I don't know. I don't know if you were watching that football game. I was at the time when the change was made. There, were, there seemed to be a Jake Fromm kind of. It was kind of like he lit a fire. Maybe not only under the team, but seemingly under the the the, the entire program, the fans. You know the stadium was was more alive than it was with with uh, Eason in the football game, and you know Georgia <laughs> they proceed to just go right down the field as soon as he comes in the game and score a touchdown. Dude's putting, I mean, he's throwing laser beams to his wide receivers and putting them on the money. It was incredible. 
It was incredible. Everything that we've heard, at least that I've heard, about this kid, man, coming in, he is, I mean, the, the, the players have really gravitated toward him. And you can kind of see it. There, there, there's a chemistry thing that, you know, I don't care how good your, your players are. I don't care how much talent you have. You've got to have that chemistry. You've got to have, you know, those guys that you know, that are identified in the locker room as the, the leaders and, you know, I don't know, man. That, that, that dude came in and lit it up last weekend. That's, again, I understand it was Appalachian State. Georgia started with a team that, you know, out of the Sun Belt that they could kind of handle. Although Appalachian State, we all know, all you have to do is ask a Michigan fan <laughs> how dangerous Appy State is. Was, you say, just ask one of those Michigan Wolverine fans how dangerous they are. But, uh, you know, Georgia comes into that football game. They took care of business, but man, it it just seemed like the same lethargic start to the football game that they've had over the last few years. And this dude comes in and just took over. He took it over, and Bulldogs never looked back. Winning that football game, thirty-one to ten, I was very impressed. To be honest with you. So, can he? You know, can he take that? Can he take that intensity? Can he take that? I don't know, man. Can, can he take all that on the road and do the same thing in front of 80,000 fans, 80,000 Irish fans, or at least 70,000 of them, or whatever it's going to turn out to be? Can he do the same thing this week? It's going to be a tough deal. It's going to be a tough deal. But, again, the one thing George can do is run the football, and we know that. And I think what Georgia needs to do is kind of much the same as what Auburn needs to do. I think they need to come in and set the tone, running the football between the tackles, move the chains with uh, move the chains with Nick Chubb and Sony Michelle, and then set you know set from up for easy passes downfield later on in the game. I think that's their best strategy. Uh, you know, I don't know. I think Georgia's defense is going to be much improved over what they did last season. I mean, I, I'm not ready to buy into what Notre Dame did last week. I'm definitely not buying Notre Dame as being a you know top 25 team at this point. We'll see. Maybe later in the season they could be. Right now, I wouldn't say that they are. <laughs> um, you know, Georgia returns 10 players off of their defense from last season. Now, that's not saying much because their defense really – didn't do what they needed to do last season. But, again, these guys are going to be under Kirby Smart. We know, all know that he's a, one of the better defensive minds in this conference, if not the country. Georgia's defense is going to be straightened out. So if they can, you know, again, shorten that game a little bit. I mean, it's not like they're playing Clemson or you know, Oklahoma's going to, you know, like Oklahoma's going to play Ohio State and Ohio State's, you know, pretty high octane oct- offense or whatever with, experienced quarterback and all that. That's not what Georgia's facing tomorrow. They're facing a team that they can, to me, match up with skill-wise or across the board, talent-wise, all of that. I like Georgia's chances winning this game. Again, I'm not going to pick the game just yet. I'm going to save that for the end of the show. <laughs> but, uh, again, I like Georgia's chances to win that football game. Moving on to what I think is the game that really many people are kind of looking over big time. No, you know what? No, we're not going to start off. with. We're not going to go to that game yet. We're going to go to the next non-conference game. There is one other non-conference game, and that is Arkansas hosting the TCU Horned Frogs. And lastly, if you remember last year's game, I don't know if you do. I don't. I definitely remember. Uh, it's not one I'm going to easily forget anytime soon. Arkansas going down to Fort Worth and doing what they had to do to TCU. It took them two overtimes to do it, but the Hogs came out with a huge victory. Austin Allen leading the way in that victory. Um, unbelievable game. Unbelievable game. I think he scored the winning touchdown there. Arkansas beating them 41-38. I look forward to be. <laughs> Pretty much that same type of game tomorrow, to be perfectly honest with you. I do think TCU is an improved team. I think TCU is a team that uh, 
can definitely uh, contend in the Big 12, maybe even win the Big 12. We'll see what happens with that. But uh, so Arkansas is going to have their hands full. I mean, and we really don't know anything about either one of these teams from what they showed in week one. Arkansas played FAMU, Florida A&M, that is. And um, TCU uh, really put it on Jackson State. Both those teams, historically black colleges and universities, and both were pretty much overmatched. So we don't, you know, again, that's that's the thing with you, that you get when you play a team that you should be that you should handle very easily in week one. You really don't know what you got. So I'm going to reserve a little bit of <coughs> judgment on either one of those teams right now. I'm just going to kind of go what we know about them from uh, last season because m- not a lot has changed. Kenny the Thrill Hill. We all remember him from Texas A&M a couple seasons ago. He is still the quarterback at TCU. He is still the quarterback, and, uh, you know, he had an up-and-down season last year. He's Again, he's very talented. He's one of those kind of dual-threat guys. He can um, throw it pretty well. He proved that at A&M, but, man, he gets in trouble. He throws some to the wrong jersey a lot and he did that a lot last season he led the big 12 in it as a matter of fact so arkansas their defense can kind of you know brett bielema can keep those guys in line maybe they can get a couple turnovers out of him not sure about that but you know again i I think arkansas is is one of those teams that that's really intriguing I, i don't know really what to expect from them I really don't, and usually that's not a good thing because, again, we we sit there and Arkansas may get off to a fast start like they did last season, and then they'll end up in November and and not do very well. Of course, they'll lose the LSU or they'll lose the A and M and they'll lose Alabama and they'll lose the Auburn or whatever. Then you look up, you know, they've been in five and old going into November, mid, mid I'm sorry, going into mid October or whatever. Then you look up there. They end up seven and six like they did last year. <laughs> Very mediocre. So I don't know. I can't really get a handle on this game. It, the game is being played in in Fayetteville. So you would think that gives Arkansas a little bit of an advantage, but I think TCU is a much improved team this season, especially defensively. Again, this is one of the games I will be picking at the end of the show. And uh, we'll throw it out there. I'm not. I'm not really sold on either one of these teams <laughs> winning the football game. The bar. I, yeah, I think it could go either way. So, again, we'll we'll talk about that later on. Again, the, the game to me that has really been looked over, and it's the first conference game of the season. It is the Missouri Tigers. It is the Battle of Columbia, <laughs> if you will. <laughs> Columbia, Missouri. The Missouri Tigers hosting South Carolina, the Gamecocks from Columbia, South Carolina. First SEC game of the season. And I think, man, I think when you look at what happened to Florida, you know, with uh, their start against Michigan, I think there are a lot of questions to be answered, especially offensively by Jim McElwain down there in Gainesville. I think, there are a lot of questions to be answered by Tennessee, by Bush Jones, despite them winning that game against Georgia Tech Monday night. I think there we'll see, you know, what's going to happen with Georgia here tomorrow against Notre Dame and here in future weeks as their schedule gets tougher. I don't know, man. The winner of this game, the winner of this football game tomorrow night is going to be SEC Network. The win- I'm, uh, no, let's see. I'm not sure. I have to see what network that one's on. The winner of this game, man, I'm telling you, (laughs) they could set themselves up to really contend in the SEC East. I I absolutely believe that. Now, Missouri, (laughs) you know, those do you talking? We're talking about bad defense. Those guys gave up 43 points to FCS level Missouri State last week. (laughs) 43 points at 35 at the half. 
So whatever Barry Odom told him at halftime, it obviously worked, but you can't just forget about the the first half where Missouri State went up and down the field against Missouri, to their credit, the offense, <laughs> I mean, Drew Locke is, is all that. I mean, Drew Locke, again, this is a fantastic season for SEC quarterbacks. I mean, there there are quarterbacks throughout this league. There's it is the most talented. I think we've seen it here in a good while. There's some experience when you look at guys like Jalen Hurts coming back. You look at uh, you look at Drew Locke, who's in his second season. Jake Bentley at South Carolina, who's also in this football game. I mean. I mean, throughout the league, there's a lot of nice-looking quarterbacks. There may not be a superstar out of any of those guys. But, uh, man, a lot of good quarterbacks. Now, of course, if if there's a superstar out of any of those guys, maybe that guy is Jake Bentley with South Carolina. He looked great against NC State last week. Well, I can't say that. He looked good because South Carolina's offense really wasn't fantastic, but they were good enough. So... (laughs) And their defense really gave up a lot of yards to NC State, which I was a little bit surprised at. I I know that South Carolina's defense is not where Will Muschamp wants it to be just yet, but that's what makes this team dangerous here maybe going forward. Maybe not just this season, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe next year or the year after that. As he gets the the defense where he wants it, South Carolina's going to be a dangerous football team because Jake Bentley's got this offense going pretty good. Now, and Debo Samuel, of course, running the football, catching the football out of the backfield. Of course, he ran the opening kickoff back all the way for the opening touchdown last week. I mean, you know, this is a dangerous football team, but again, Drew Locke and Missouri, they put 72 points on the board. I don't know. I, I I don't know. This is this is going to be a crazy game. But I'm going to be whoever wins this football game tomorrow night. Whoever wins it, I mean, are they a contender in the SEC? I think they could possibly be. I mean, again, there are a lot of questions to be answered in Knoxville. There are a lot of questions to be answered in Gainesville, and we'll see about George. <laughs> We'll see, man. I, you know, again, you may laugh at that, but you know, we're talking about Missouri who was four and eight last year. Was South Carolina was uh, not much better at uh, at six and seven, but both these teams are better right now. And I, I, I again, I think that South Carolina is a team that could really make some strides here in the next couple seasons. Hell. They might do it this year. <laughs> I mean, it, it is very conceivable if you, if you know, in my thoughts, in my views, we'll see what happens. Uh, so that game, again, I, I'm looking forward to that one. Not many people probably are, but I'm looking forward to checking that game out. I think that is going to be, uh, could be one of the better games of the day anyway. So... Again, looking through the rest of the schedule, man, not a whole lot else, to be honest with you. I mean, those are really, to me, though, are three really, really fantastic matchups. Sorry, four fantastic matchups. I think that uh, you go go past that. Of course, now, Florida's not playing because of Hurricane Irma. And, uh, again, I would be remiss without giving my thoughts and prayers to um, everyone involved down there in Florida and I guess Georgia, all the people that are, you know, evacuating and those people that are uh, waiting to storm out. I have family in Florida, and I I just wish everyone down there the best. And my thoughts and prayers uh, are with everyone involved. And I just hope everything that turns out all right. I hope Irma is not as strong as everyone thinks it's going to be once it hits land. And uh, everything is going to be fine. But... Again, as we look at the rest of the slate in the SEC, beside those, to me, those are the four marquee matchups of the weekend. And, you know, Alabama's playing Fresno State. Um, Interesting stat that I heard today about Alabama is Nick Saban, you know, these neutral site games like he had last week against Florida State. He's 6-0, and and he's 6-0 against the point spread. (laughs) Pretty impressive, right? (laughs) 
pretty impressive. But the next week, when he plays a Power 5 conference team, which Fresno State is, being from the Mountain West Conference, Alabama is 0-5 against the number, <laughs> which is 43 and a half points right now. So, <laughs> you know, take it for which, what it's worth. You know, if you you want to put a few dollars down on that, you might want to think about putting them on Fresno State. I'm just saying. It's a lot of points. Uh, LSU staying in the SEC West. They host Chattanooga from the FCS. Uh, man, Kevin Sumlin. <laughs> You know, they'll try to, you know, kind of pick up the pieces out from L.A. and host Nichols and try to come out with their first victory of the season. U.T. Martin travels to Ole Miss. Who, man, Shea Patterson put on a show last week, putting up 47 points against South Alabama. Another quarterback to put on a show last week was Nick Fitzgerald. He put it on Charleston Southern. He'll get Louisiana Tech tomorrow. Uh, moving on, Tennessee hosts Indiana State. If we move on to the SEC East, Kentucky hosts Eastern Car- Eastern Kentucky. I'm sorry, and uh, Vanderbilt tangles with Al- Alabama A&M from the uh, SWAC. So, uh, and there you have it. That's, that's the the lineup. So let's get into these picks. Let's talk about who do I think? <laughs> who do I think is gonna? come out victorious and do I think they're going to cover the spread do I think they're going to come you know maybe not cover the spread to start off with the Arkansas game TCU like I say, I'm, I'm kind of look, looking forward to this football game I think that you know Arkansas is like I said a very interesting team I, I'm really interested in seeing how Austin Allen performs on this football game how the defense kind of, you know, where is this defense under Brett Bielema? He's supposed to be a defensive guy. The line right now is TCU being a three-point favorite. <laughs> and, uh, man, this this one was a close one to call, to be perfectly honest. I mean, it is a close one to call, but I'm going to go. I'm going to go with TCU. I'm going to go with TCU winning this football game. I think they'll... I think they'll find a way to, you know, to to, to win it uh, near the end. You know, the thing that scares me about them is Kenny Hill and throwing interceptions. But I'm just not sure about this Arkansas defense right now. So, you know, I think, of course, TCU is going to have a little bit of revenge on their mind. So I'm going to take TCU and the points to beat Arkansas tomorrow in Fayetteville. Let's, let's move on. Let's move on two the SEC tilt South Carolina moving on to Columbia Missouri to play the Missouri Tigers man I, I, I again I think this is going to be a fantastic football game it's gonna, it could uh, show us who's going to really be maybe able to uh, compete in that SEC East the point spread right now and that football game is Missouri is a three-point favorite. <laughs> three-point favorite to over under 71. 71 points is what Las Vegas thinks could be scored in this football game. I don't know, man. This this one's a tough one, but uh, I don't know. This, this I'm gonna go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go out on a limb. I'm gonna I'm gonna go South Carolina in this football game. I, I, I am a Jake Bentley fan. I'm also a Drew Locke fan. I think this dude is a real deal. I mean, Jake, I mean, Drew Locke only threw for 521 yards and seven touchdowns last week. <laughs> this dude's a real deal. He did well last season as well. I mean, he, I mean, the, the Missouri's offense rocked and rolled, but again, their defense did not do very much against an FCS level opponent. I like the fact that South Carolina beat ACC, an ACC team that many think could be a sleeper in that league. I'm going to go South Carolina. I'm going to go with them pulling off the big win at Missouri and them, you know, kind of you know, kind of taking the early lead, so to speak, in the SEC. So we're going to go with 
the Gamecocks winning that football game. Let's move it on to Georgia and Notre Dame. Finding Irish come to this game a five point favorite again. Notre Dame went one and four last week. I'm sorry, last season against uh, Power Five conference football teams. A lot has changed with the Notre Dame Fighting Irish here over the last season. Brandon Wimbush looks like he could be the real deal, but man, I'm going with Georgia to, to pull the upset. I'm going with the Bulldogs, Jake Fromm. Man, he impressed the hell out of me last week. I like George. I, I like their uh, their chances to run the football with um, Nick Chubb, Sonny Michelle. I think Jake Fromm is a hot guy right now. I know it's his first start, but give me Georgia. And I think they're going to cover that five points. I think they're going to find a way to win this thing by a touchdown. Somewhere, I think, in the range of 27, 20, somewhere in that, somewhere like that, 30 to 23. Give me Georgia, man, straight up over the Notre Dame fighting Irish. And then that gets us to Auburn traveling to Death Valley. The, the Battle of the Tigers, Jarrett Stidham, uh, Kelly, quarterback, the new fresh new quarterback for the Clemson Tigers who replaces Deshaun Watson Kelly Bryant I'm sorry question about Auburn is on Johnson though will he play in this football game not really sure he's going if he is he's not going to be 100% Cameron Petway will be available he did not play last week but I think that helps man I'm not really as worried about as some people are about Kerryon Johnson not playing if it, that's what if that's the case or if him not being effective because he's not 100. percent I, I like what Auburn has behind him as well. I just don't think it's going to be quite enough to get it done against Clemson. I'm going to go with the Clemson Tiger. I'm going to go with Auburn covering the five points. I think we're talking about a game that's going to go right down to the wire. Maybe a field goal to win this thing at the end. But I'm going to go with Clemson to do it, man. I'm going to go with Clemson to pull it off. Probably, I'm thinking somewhere in the range of <clears throat> a score of maybe 27, 24, something like that. Again, I think it's going to be a great effort by Auburn. I think Stidham's going to play well. I think Kelly Bryant is going to play well for Clemson. But in the end, these defenses are going to take over this game. I don't see a it being a lot of points. Right now, the over-under is 56 and a half. So if it's going to be 27-24, like I'm thinking, I think you have to play the under. I think you have to play the under, man. So, again, my picks take Auburn and the points. Take them to, to, to uh, cover the five but not win the football game. And Clemson take South Carolina straight up at Missouri take Georgia straight up at Notre Dame and take TCU against the Arkansas Razorbacks. Those are my picks. And this has been the SEC Week 2 preview here right here on the Sports and Swag Report podcast. I have enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed it as well. And please join us again next week. Join us Sunday night as we break down what we see tomorrow, the recap show. And then we'll be right back here next Friday. TGIFF. Thank goodness it's a football Friday. Breaking it down again for SEC Week 3. Again, I'm Kerry Wood, Mr. Sports and Swag. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, like that Facebook page. Check out sportsandswagreport.com. Make sure you do that. Again, until next time, I am 